Hallo Leute und willkommen zurück zu meinem Channel. Und, and today is going to be another video about my sex ed series. So this one is going to be a 10 questions that you should ask before having sex. Now, a little disclaimer is that I actually have had these from another YouTuber who made a video on eight questions, but I decided to add to that question list and kind of put my own spin on this. So this is by no means, you don't have to ask all 10 of these questions the, the minute you have or are thinking of having sex during this. So I just thought I'd preface that now because you may see all these questions and be like, why would I ask all of these questions in one go? It can come with time or you can maybe ask a few of these questions before having sex. But these are the eight vital questions that you should ask before having sex. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that I want to say in terms of communication, as long as you communicate, and this is a form of consent. So if two consenting people are wanting to have sex, this is what you should do. So face-to-face, -face, of course, is best, but of course, to each their own. If you want to communicate over the phone, through text, which dirty texting is also a thing. People love that. I actually like that too. So if those of you who want to do that also can do that, um, however you see fit with your situation. So if you feel like you don't want to talk over it's like maybe online dating or not really wanting to talk to someone face to face or you're not like meeting somebody in a bar or in a club or something then this can be however you want to communicate as long as this is being talked about that's all that matters as long as there's some form of communication so the first question that i wanted to put down was when was the last time you had an sti check checkup and another thing to add to that that was not added onto this before was the results of that checkup. So it does sound a lot less harsh when you say it this way instead of being like, have you had, have you been tested for any of the STIs? You see, it does sound a lot, it does sound a lot better when, when it's like, when was your last STI checkup and what were the results? And also obviously talking about that you need to reduce the stigma of these STIs. People, I feel like, are afraid of to talk about these because it is a stigma and people think that it's not that important. But if you are having sex with anybody and you feel like you can't talk to them or you feel like it's just a red flag when they're not even telling you, run as soon as you can. Just get away from the situation because if you don't know somebody's STI history or anything like that, you maybe we wouldn't need to know their entire history, but more current, like within the last year. Like, have they had any STIs even within that year and are they recovered? Have they had a safe sex? Have they been safe? Have they had no STIs, no chlamydia, no AIDS, no herpes, no nothing? Or have they maybe once had an STI? It's just very important to talk about. So... It also is also a form of respect, obviously, if you are having sex with anybody. You do need to ask this question because it is very important in case if you end up catching something that maybe you didn't know about. And also the fact that you want to word this a different this way because it's not going to sound judgmental toward this person. I would say be open and honest with who you are having sex with. I have not been being completely honest in my past sex experiences and it's kind of gone downhill. It went really downhill. I didn't talk about my history or my STI history or anything like that. And it did go downhill. Granted, I have never had any STIs. I've definitely had scares that I thought I had them, but I've been tested and of course never have had them. But I did have a yeast, I've had yeast infections, but those do technically count as an STI because it is a fungal infection. Anyways, but just being open and respecting your partner is a good thing to have while, while this is being talked about. So in the second question that I thought I would ask is what protection should we use? So obviously if you're just on the pill, 
it's not enough and it does not protect you against STIs. I'm going to make a separate video on birth control as a whole and what it does and doesn't do because this is very important. So obviously if you are having sex with a man and a woman, if you are having sex with multiple people, orgies, whatever you fancy, I feel like this should be the number one thing that you should ask is what protection shall we use? Because I have definitely experienced the past, I'm sure some people have watching this video, where they have been gone insane because they thought they may have been pregnant because of their past sex history. I've been there before and it's not fun, especially because I did not use protection and wish I would have because it would have made me feel a lot better about myself even if the condom didn't break. So obviously just being on the pill is not enough, but if you want to use dental dams, if you want to use an extra external condom, internal condom, if you want to use the pill and condoms, if you have a, what they call it, it's the, um, I mentioned this in, the, in my other sex ed video, but, it, and uh, yeah, so if you are using some form of birth control, because I do think it is important, even if you are having sex with a man and man, or if you're having it woman on women, or with multiple people that are the same gender as you, it is important to even have sex, to even use it then, like using a dental dam, using even gloves if you've got longer nails, I guess, or maybe trimming those back a little bit if you know that you're going to be having sex or dealing with anything sexual, because nobody wants to, to get a nail cut in that area. So that's one thing that you can do to prevent it. However, if you feel like you might catch something from that region if you're doing something like fingering or anything like that. Obviously, to be safe, you might want to use a glove. It might actually kind of help you a little bit with the pressure depending on how strong your fingers are and what your partner likes. So the next thing, the, the next question is what turns you on and, or what gets you going? So this is obviously important for not just you, but also for your partner or partners depending on how many people you're having sex with. But this is very important because that way you know what gets you going. That way you're not like, I don't know what gets me going. And it's like, really, you don't know, like, have you ever, like, fantasized about something? You know, what kind of things do you like? And reciprocating that between two people is, or, or more people, you need to know, like, what gets the person going. Like, what don't they like? What do they like? What are their turn-ons? What are their turn-offs? Like, what do they not want to do? What do they want to do? So that is also very, very important. Obviously, you can even say this during sex, which is something that a lot of people should do anyway, instead of just sitting there or laying on your back or doing whatever you do for sexual positions and just sitting there and just taking it all, even if it's not satisfying. I have been there before, even though I knew exactly what got me going, but it just did not work because that person did not satisfy my needs. So that also is a factor because I'm sure that we have all been there. Those who are currently sexually active or who have had sex before have definitely ha been that down that route and had to teach them how to deal with it. So that's the third question. The fourth question is that what do you like doing and what do you like being done to you? So this varies obviously between many different kinds of people, whether you want, it's all based on what you like doing, like if you like to give someone oral, if you like oral given to you, if you like to be penetrated, if you like to have things go slow, have things go fast, you like a few different varying speeds depending on your preference. It's all varying on what you or the person likes doing. If the person likes giving head, that's fine. Let them give, if they want to give you head or give you a blowjob or basically that's the same thing. But you know, like what, that's fine. So another one, question number five is what don't you like? So obviously it's many things. Like if someone's like, don't say the word daddy, don't call me daddy. Oh, I'm getting grossed out by just saying that out loud. But you know what I mean? Like, obviously you need to set boundaries when you are having sex with somebody and knowing what they don't like is going to save you in the long run. Because if you're having sex with them multiple times, not just the one time, but if you're trying to like build a sexual relationship, being friends with benefits, or if you're in a serious relationship wanting to have sex, this is very important because you're also setting boundaries. Anyways, I just repeated myself. So 
there's obviously everybody who's had sex or even just people in general, there's always something that they don't like. And this is going to help you with that. Anyways, so on to the next question, which is, what's your relationship status? Now, obviously, some people might be a little bit more discreet with it. Some people might talk about, you know, knowing, like, oh, it's complicated or like whatever. You need to be a lot more direct about this, especially if you are sitting somewhere and they're talking to you and you're you know, getting a conversation going in public or on the phone or anything like that. You're sexting. Like, if you know what somebody, what you're getting into, it's easier to either run or walk away than it is to completely, um, than to completely just be there and find out that they are with somebody and you did not want that to happen. You wanted them to be single and you wanted them to not have sex with anybody else. So this is something that can save you a lot in the long run. All these questions are going to save you in the long run if you ask these questions up front and if this is being talked about because sex is not always talked about. And yes, it is an un uncomfortable topic for many people to talk about. I do not talk about this with everybody that I meet because that's Obviously, not everyone is going to have the same opinions as me as this. Anyways, so question number seven is, is this casual? Is this serious? So this is basically talking about where you guys are at as sex partners, whether or not you guys are in a serious relationship and you're wanting to take it to the next level instead of, you know, doing, going to second base or, you know, doing anything like that. This is going to help you. Of course, I feel like I'm saying that about every single question. So it's that way you both know where you guys are at on this page. And if one of you guys wants to be more serious than the other, if it's just a one-time thing, if it's casual, if it's seriously casual, which is a bit interesting, but it, I guess it can happen. Knowing where you stand with this person is the thing that I wish I would have asked myself when I was, when I had sex, because after having sex, I thought this was going to be a reoccurring thing, but it may have just been a hookup and they may have just broken your heart because you wanted it to be more than just a hookup. So those of you who have been through that, if you just ask somebody like, what is this? Because I wish I would have, because a lot of these questions I did not ask. I mean, I just asked very basic questions like the, like what protection shall we use? And when was the last time? I don't think I ever asked about the STI thing, but I also just didn't really, I wasn't super experienced at the time. And of course, now that I'm more experienced, I have more knowledge as to what I should be doing. So knowing what you're getting into is key in this video is, are you sleeping with anybody else? Now, if they are sleeping with multiple people, I am going to tell you that know their, those people's sexual history. Granted, it's great if they are sleeping with multiple people, if they're wanting to kind of include you in the mix. I actually kind of be honored with that. So if you're curious about it, like obviously if you're sleeping with anybody else, like I feel like I wish I would have asked that question because I know my exes were sleeping with other bitches and didn't tell me. It's a very important vital question because maybe you want to know what their medical past is with every single partner that they are with. They are with like three different people compared not including you or if they are with maybe one or two other people. You should know their sexual history in case if you catch something from them because that can happen where the man or the woman can catch something even from having sex with multiple people where it can kind of spread and that's gross and not something you would want happening to you unless if you want that to happen to you, which, why, but I've heard of people that like that. Anyways, so question number nine, which is, what is your sexual history? And do you have sexual trauma? I feel like in this day and age, I wish I would have asked this question too, because people ask what my history is, but they didn't ask about my trauma. While you are talking about this, it is important to know that if someone does have these traumas, to be more respectful. You should be respectful anyway, but knowing what they went through, not really the, the details or anything like that. So obviously if they are a virgin or if they've been raped or something like that, 
if they've been assaulted sexually or something like that, or if they've gone through something that happened to them before. It's important to know that because if they freak out during sex or after sex, or if they have like a mid panic attack, it can happen. And it's also something to know that's very important to not only you, but anyone else that you're having sex with, as well as you need to be more upfront about it. I wish I was more upfront about things like that in the past, because just knowing what someone's gone through in terms of their history is also important. Anyway, so question number 10 is where do you want to have sex? So as people have sex, they may not want to have sex in the bedroom. They may want to have it in a laundromat, in different places like that. Granted, I just know from personal experience that not everybody wants to have sex in a bed because you may feel more guilty or vulnerable. I definitely, as someone who has had sex, I have never actually had sex in a bed before. I know, hard to believe, right? So I like to have sex in weird places just so I don't stand a chance of getting caught too much. But that's my personal opinion. Granted, would I like to have sex in a bed? Yes. But also this is just questions. So yes, everybody's into different things. So if you want to have sex in the kitchen, if you want to have sex in a car. So that is it, everybody. So thank you guys so much for watching this video if you stayed for the whole thing, which I hope you have. Be sure to subscribe to this channel as well as also follow support me on Patreon. Yes, guys, I just created a Patreon. Any money that helps. Um, I will have a link down in the description box as to what you can expect from Patreon and what you also, if you guys want to support me on Patreon, you do not have to, you're not legally obligated or obligated whatsoever to support me on Patreon. But if you want to, if you have a little bit of extra time and money, if you have like an extra $5 a month, $3 a month, even just that helps, please let me know and support me on Patreon if you'd like, because there is plenty of rewards that you guys will get there, such as an exclusive live stream, some sneak peeks, an unedited video, and many other things. So if those of you guys who are interested in that, I will leave that down, that information down in the description. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and also be sure to follow me on Instagram too because I do post quite regularly on my story as well as in the video as well as on my page. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video and I will see you guys in my next video. Bis später.